Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to our journey down the road to somewhere. I hope you've had a, a good summer break uh, and uh, are ready to uh, get back into our journey both down Route 66 and uh, through the Bible. Um, I thought, uh, you know, and we're now in season three, uh, and season three was going to take us through Kansas. We'll look at that in a little bit. And uh, the, uh, the part of the Bible that is uh, hooked up with the state of Kansas is Old Testament poetry. And we'll be looking at that for the next five weeks together. And what we're going to see today is that the first uh, episode in that season and that part of the Bible is the book of Job. And uh, I've simply entitled our episode today, Why? And you'll hopefully understand the reason for that as we move along today. One of the things I thought I might do uh, real quickly is uh, just for those that are joining us and haven't been with us so far is just give a quick little overview of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, on the one hand, I'm uh, taking you through uh, my latest book, The Road to Somewhere, and we're looking every week at a chapter uh, of the narrative of that story. And uh, of course, in the story, uh, our two main characters are John Calvin, who was the main character in the prequel to this book, uh, Somewhere Fast, and uh, the female counterpart to John, Joy Jardine, who's a professional uh, videographer. And they've been hired uh, by a kind of a mystery uh, philanthropist uh, to drive down Route 66 and uh, to shoot a series of 66 videos uh, that correspond to uh, 66 lectures, one on each book of the Bible, and uh, so uh, as we go down the road, what we're doing is uh, a very short little video is part of the storyline of the book, and in those little videos, uh, 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 John uh, gives a, uh, a little history of the stop on Route 66, and then also gives a little teaser, sort of a mini overview of the book that's connected to that. Uh, the philanthropist has provided for them a, uh, a modified and restored and updated 66 Corvette convertible uh, to take on this trip down Route 66. The car actually almost becomes a character at certain points in the book. It's kind of fun. And uh, what uh, the sort of twist, at least one of them in the story, is that uh, when the story begins, uh, John, who, uh, as you know from, well, you might not know, but if you've read the book Somewhere Fast, you know that John, his background is that he was uh, an ordained Presbyterian minister. The book starts out, really, the opening line of the book, uh, John makes the statement in a conversation that uh, he really doesn't know the Bible very well, which is a lie. Uh, and at that point in time, which is about six years down line from where the first book ended, uh, John is now teaching psychology at a community college in Kansas City. And when he's asked to, uh, to do this series of videos, uh, you know, and has told them that he really doesn't know the Bible very well, they like the idea, uh, and there's another twist to that, but the people that are doing it, the mystery philanthropists, they like the idea that having a narrator that isn't real religious and, and maybe doesn't really know the Bible that well to fit in with these videos. But uh, uh, along the line, we have this relationship then between John and, and Joy, and she doesn't know his true background. And, and one of the twists in the story is when he finally reveals to her uh, you know, who, who he really is, I guess you could say. Uh, so far, you know, we've been uh, through two what we're calling seasons. We're each leg of this journey down Route 66 that takes us through another state. Um, it becomes a season for us. And uh, our current season, which is season three, is through Kansas. So, so far, you know, as we've gone down the road, 
Uh, one of the things, if you aren't aware of it, is that there are eight states that Route 66 passes through, and there are eight major divisions of the Bible, so we've paired those up so that each state, uh, again, is paired with uh, one of the major sections of the Bible, and depending on how many books there are uh, in that particular section of the Bible, that's how many stops that we will make along the trip. So we've already been through Illinois, uh, five stops there that corresponded to what we call the Pentateuch, what the Jews call the Torah. Uh, and then we've been through Missouri, and uh, we, uh, the, the part of the Bible that, uh, that Protestants uh, would call this part that we went through, uh, is history kind of picks up from the end of the Pentateuch with the uh, conquest of the land of Israel under Joshua and then takes us really 12 stops that take us through the entire uh, Old Testament history of the nation of Israel. Uh, in the Jewish Bible, this part of their Bible, which is the same content, uh, they refer to actually as the former prophets. And then we're now getting ready to go through the state of Kansas. And by the way, those uh, first two seasons are available uh, on YouTube. And if you go to bobbelts.com uh, and go to the video uh, link, it'll take you over to the Telos Project website. And there, and there are playlists there. And all you have to do is go to the Road to Somewhere playlist and you can go through the uh, early part if you, if you miss that part of it. So anyway, uh, when we uh, enter into the state of Kansas, it's kind of a, a strange little part of Route 66 because it just cuts the corner uh, of the state of Kansas and there are only 13, I think, 0.2 miles of Route 66. It, uh, it's paired up with, uh, again, Old Testament poetry, and there are five books of Old Testament poetry in our Bibles, and the, um, so we have to make five stops in a little 13-mile stretch, but uh, it's, a, it's a fun part, both of Route 66, and it's a really uh, kind of a cool part of the Bible as we go through these books that we call poetry, uh, also sometimes, by the way, referred to as wisdom literature, and I think I sent you a little email talking about that, but we'll, uh, you know, uh, hit that again as we go through these books. First stop in Kansas is a little town called Galena, and uh, again, uh, in the episode, uh, John will give a little bit of a history of the town of Galena in the book, and then he'll also uh, give a little bit of an overview of the book of Job. But originally, uh, Galena was just a little mining town here in this corner of Kansas, but for Route 66 travelers, the real uh, fame of this city has to do with a 1951 International Harvester L Series tow truck. And uh, it's found at uh, an old restored gas station, originally called Texacan, uh, was the name of the station. And uh, then it was uh, two women bought it and turned it into a gift shop. And it was, I think, called Two Women on Route 66. And then uh, in, in uh, kind of a, a cool uh, part of the story uh, when John Lasseter and the Pixar team were getting ready to make the film Cars, which if you aren't familiar with it, actually takes place on a fictional Route 66. Uh, they, they came here and when they got to this filling station, there was this old tow truck. And this tow truck actually then became the inspiration for one of the characters in the movie Cars, uh, and in the movie he's called Tow Mater, uh, kind of just by, for short referred to as Mater, and that uh, filling station turned into a gift shop, then became Cars on the Route. So uh, in the story, uh, in the book, John, as he's 
uh, giving a little bit of background to Galena. He, you know, he, he talks about this. Joy sets up the shot so that you uh, can see both the, in the video, which is fictional, uh, you, you see both the filling station and then you see the truck in the background. Um, it, he gives a quick, uh, a little story about Galena. He talks about, you know, the movie Cars and how uh, this truck ties into it. And then he transitions over again in the book to uh, talking about the first of the poetic books, which is the book of Job. And he explains a little bit about the fact that they're now in a new state, state of Kansas, and that therefore they're in a, a new uh, section of the Bible, again called poetry, and that Job is the first of those books. Job, by the way, uh, I'm sure many of you have read it, maybe many of you haven't. Uh, it's quite interesting that outside of the world of biblical scholarship, really in the world of uh, literature, uh, Job by many is considered to be uh, the great masterpiece of the Bible. Uh, it, it's a very fascinating book, both in terms of its subject matter, uh, but also the way that the book is uh, set up. Uh, interestingly uh, enough, when uh, scholars have studied the book, um, they, they really aren't sure. We're told that this man, uh, whose name is Yeov in Hebrew and then transliterates into Job uh, in English, that uh, he's from the land of Uz, and nobody is really quite sure where that was or if it existed uh, and is simply, uh, a, Job is more a, uh, uh, I don't wanna say a fictional piece, but that it is a, uh, again, a, a epic poem uh, based on some true event that probably actually happened. But uh, we really aren't sure who wrote it. Uh, we aren't sure where us was. And uh, we're really not sure when the story takes place. So there's a lot of mystery to this. And yet uh, the story seems to be set uh, in the time of Abraham. Uh, but there are many parts of the book where there are vocabulary and words that weren't really used at that period of time and, and are much later. So some scholars believe that even though the story is set uh, around 2000 BC, that it might not have been actually put down in writing till much later than that. So. Uh, again, a lot of mystery uh, about the book. Um, it, it begins with, a, with an encounter, and one of the things about the structure of the book that uh, if you read it, you might notice, is that it, it starts out in a narrative uh, a form of writing, of prose, and then it's gonna switch at a point in time into poetry, and most of the book is written in poetic structure, and then the book, the end of the book, uh, goes back to a, uh, a prose narrative form. And uh, again, some uh, scholars, as they looked at the book, they, they feel like it's, it's structured almost like a, a Greek play. Now, as far as we know, uh, the Jewish uh, community of the Old Testament era uh, didn't have plays. Uh, uh, probably the closest they came to a play was the acting out every year uh, of the Passover event. But uh, some, again, as they look at that, they see sort of a three-act structure that would go with the play. And, and there is some sense that perhaps this was passed down, again, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of years uh, in this kind of a structure. And in this first part of the book, almost what you could think of as Act One, uh, we're told that, uh, that there's an encounter that takes place between uh, God and Satan in the heavenly realm. Uh, there's some debate whether this is 
the same Satan that we think of as Satan. The word in the text simply means the destroyer, uh, and so, or the ad, uh, uh, not the advocate, but uh, you know, the, the the person that is sort of the uh, the the enemy against the people, and uh, so. You know, there's, again, as is true oftentimes, there's a lot of debate about that. But in this encounter, uh, what happens is that God points out Job, who's called a righteous man uh, earlier in the text, and he's also called the greatest man of the East, which probably places us over at least on the eastern side of the Jordan River, some believe. Uh, the northern part of that, others believe south where Edom might have been. Um, but anyway, um, uh, this in this encounter, when God points out Job to Satan, Satan basically kind of challenges God and said, well, of course, you know, he's, you know, a good guy and he's righteous and worships you because look what, you've given him everything. And in response to that, uh, God gives uh, Satan permission to afflict Job, says anything but don't touch him physically, and the result is that we see that foreign nations, uh, a foreign nation comes in and, uh, and basically uh, steals all of his possessions, his, his cattle and all that he owns that made him a, a rich man, and then uh, a, a huge storm takes place and all of his children, seven sons and three daughters, are gathered together for a celebration and the house collapses on them and they're all killed. So he, he loses all of his possessions, he, he loses his family. It's a horrible disaster and tragedy and of course, he doesn't know what's happening in the heavenly realms and, and what's taking place behind these events. And then, because he still, uh, you know, uh, continues to, uh, you know, to worship God, uh, Satan says, well, that's great, but let me afflict him physically and see if he still stays faithful to you. And he's given permission, and, and uh, Job is afflicted with boils, basically, from uh, the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And so we see this situation where, where Job has just been devastated, both physically and in terms of his you know, family relationally and in terms of all of his possessions. I mean, he has lost everything and he, he doesn't know why. And that's why Job oftentimes when we wrestle with the question, well, if God is really good, first of all, if he exists and he's good and he's all powerful, why is there so much suffering and pain in the world? And, you know, you maybe have even been through situations in your own life where you've lost a loved one or, or had some sort of a very, you know, difficult situation and, and the question kind of becomes, well, why? And there's a sense that many people think, well, the book of Job is going to give us the answer to that and we're going to see how that comes out as we move along. So. Um, what happens in the book is as Job has been afflicted is that suddenly three of his friends, and now we move into this poetic section of the book, three of his friends arrive uh, supposedly to give him comfort. But basically what happens is that in a series of uh, conversations between Job and his friends is that his friends keep telling him, well, you know, you've done something wrong. The reason that has happened to you is that somehow you have sinned and you need to confess that. Now, understand, and I think maybe there's even some of this in our world today, but uh, I think part of the background to Job, the reason it was written was that there was a lot of bad theology uh, within the Jewish community uh, and I think Job set out to correct some of this, but the thinking was quite simple that, uh, you know, that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. And that is bad theology. It is not what the Bible 
teaches. And so the friends keep coming back to this and Job keeps defending himself. I haven't done this. Job doesn't know that again in this heavenly you know, scene that uh, what is going on between God and Satan. And, uh, and so again, he doesn't know why. And uh, he continues to try to defend himself. And then you, we come to the climax of the book of Job. And uh, God shows up, uh, first in a storm and speaks uh, to Job. Uh, a little bit later on, we're told that he speaks out of the whirlwind. And, and if you could imagine, again, if you go back to uh, thinking of this almost as if it was a play, and uh, at this point in time, you know, off, uh, off to the side of the stage, maybe are Job's friends. There's a fourth person that shows up, Elihu, who again uh, just continues this line of reasoning, you've done something wrong. When the, so the four of them may be off stage, Job uh, sitting in an ash heap, covered with boils head to foot, and it would be perhaps like a light would shine down and suddenly God would speak. And at this point is, uh, is where the big twist in Job comes because if you're in the audience and you've been observing all of this going on, even just reading the book, all of this going on, when God shows up, what you're expecting is you're gonna get an answer. Why, why is it? that you know, bad things happen to good people and really the reverse. Why is it that oftentimes it's you know, the, the wicked or the bad guys that seem to prosper? And so you're expecting an answer to come at this point in time. And the twist is, is that God really doesn't give him an answer. As a matter of fact, what God does is God begins to ask Job questions. And there actually are 71 questions that God uh, addresses Job with. And it starts right out from the beginning, kind of like, where were you when I created the universe? In other words, you know, you're asking me why something happens as if I don't have, you know, a handle on what's going on in the world. Well, let me ask you this one. I created the universe. Do you know how to do that? And so it's question after question after question. And to all of them, you know, Job basically has to answer, I don't know. And finally, you know, the, the story wraps up and, and I'm going to do something really unfair to you today because the, the ending of the story and how uh, the conclusions that Job comes to and what the answer is to the question of why are all on the video, the longer video on Job and in the book. Uh, what John does is he then challenges the person that's watching the video they're shooting to go to the link that takes them to that longer video in order to find out how this great story comes to an end. And so in your email or Facebook, you got a link to that longer video on Job. And so I'm simply gonna challenge you to watch that video and see what the answer is to what might be the ultimate question, why does God allow these things to, uh, you know, to happen? Uh, you'll also, uh, at the end of this short little video, there'll be a, uh, a box in the lower left-hand corner where you can click onto that and it'll immediately take you over uh, to that longer uh, lecture on the book of Job. And uh, again, I just challenge you, that's really the purpose why I wrote the book, was to try to create a story that would always then push people towards those longer videos so that by the time you finish the book, you've really been given a, a pretty good overview of every book of the Bible. So in the book, uh, they're done shooting the video. Uh, Joy and John uh, pack up. Uh, they, uh, they hop in their uh, Corvette and uh, head just down the road, actually just a few miles 
uh, to the town of Riverton, Kansas, and uh, there, along with getting a little bit of uh, history of Route 66, uh, the corresponding book of the Bible that we will give a little introduction to is the book of uh, Psalms. So Riverton, Kansas, the book of Psalms next week, and uh, thanks for jumping back in to our journey together, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, this is helpful to you, and uh, we will see you then next week.